Good morning, everybody. Boker tov lekulam. So wonderful to see you uh, here with us today, and I want to say a special welcome to all of our guests. Ze nifla lerot et kulchem ayom v'ani rotzeh livarech et aorchim shelanu. Thank you. Some of you I know have come from very far away. Just join with me in a word of prayer before we begin our message today. Lord, we thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit here. Open our hearts and minds to hear what the Spirit is saying to His people. Lord, stir up the gift in me to teach and to be clear this morning. We pray this in the name of Yeshua. Man, you know, in these days of increased tensions and troubles in our region, and the many challenges that are faced by our nation it's very important for us to understand about entering into God's rest particularly when we gather on a Shabbat so this morning I'd like to talk to you about entering God's rest. So turn with me to Exodus chapter 31. We're going to start in verse 12. And we're going to read about God's word concerning Shabbat. Exodus 31 verse 12. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, But as for you, speak to the sons of Israel saying, You shall surely observe my Sabbaths, for this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Therefore you are to observe the Sabbath, for it is holy to you. Everyone who profanes it shall surely be put to death. For whoever does any work on it, that person shall be cut off from among his people. For six days work may be done, but on the seventh day there is a Sabbath of complete rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day shall surely be put to death. The Sabbath was an integral part of the covenant that God made with Israel in the desert. We understand God's command to observe the Sabbath as part of the Ten Commandments. And this word was, was spoken as a command to a particular generation of people in the desert. The people of Israel, as they had just come out of slavery in Egypt. And they were being formed into a nation, really, for the first time. What happened to that generation to whom the word of the Lord came? What became of the people who heard God speak from the mountain? Well, turn to Psalm 95. Psalm 95. Some generations later, after Israel had come into the land, these inspired words were written. And they tell us about that generation in the desert. We're going to start with the last part of verse 7. Beginning with the word today. And uh, go all the way through verse 11. Uh, today, if you would hear his voice. Verse 8. Do not harden your hearts 
as at Meribah, as at the day of Masa in the wilderness. When your fathers tested me, they tried me though they had seen my work. For 40 years I loathed that generation. They and said they are a people who err in their heart and they do not know my ways. Therefore I swore in my anger, truly they shall not enter into my rest. So what is uh, revealed through the psalm is that that particular generation that received the commands of God were not able or did not obey the command to enter into God's resting place. And of course we know that they were a generation that wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. The question for us is how do we understand that command today? We who stand in covenant relationship with this God, we who regard the words of scripture as inspired by the Holy Spirit, how do we stand as a generation before the command of God to enter into his rest? A command that was so important to God, he said, if you don't do this, you will die. And we have the example of the, of the generation that heard that command that died in the desert. So let's turn to the Brit Hadashah, let's turn to the New Testament and see where this Psalm, Psalm 95, is explained for us. And I believe the question for us as believers today is what is the spirit of this law. Because we do not strive to obey the letter of the law. Because we have learned that the letter will kill you. But the spirit will give you life. Nevertheless, uh, it is the spirit of the law that gives life. And we must be diligent to understand what is the spirit saying to us in this command from the throne of God to enter into his rest. So turn with me to the New Testament book of Hebrews. This wonderful letter that was written by a messianic Jew to other messianic Jews just after the time of Yeshua. And he does a wonderful and inspired um, job of interpreting this psalm for us. So turn to Hebrews chapter 3 and let's begin with verse 19. Hebrews 3 verse 19, and if you really want to be diligent, I recommend to you the entire chapter. And the following chapter. <laughs> But let's, let's look here at, at what I've selected for you. Hebrews 3.19 So we see that they were not able to enter because of unbelief. Okay, so this... Uh, inspired messianic Jew reveals to us that the generation that died in the desert did not enter God's rest for one reason. And that reason was they did not believe. Let's go right on to the first verse in chapter 4. 
פרק ד' פסוק 1. And, and it's as if he is speaking to us today. וכאילו שהוא מדבר אלינו היום. Therefore let us fear if while a promise remains of entering his rest any one of you may seem to have come short of it. לכן בעוד עומדת ההבטחה להיכנס אל מנוחתו, ראוי לנו לחשוש שמא יימצא איש מכם מאחר להיכנס. But the word they heard did not profit them because it was not united by faith in those who heard. הרי גם אנחנו התבשרנו כמו הם, אך הדבר שנשמע לא הועיל להם, משום שלא התמזג עם אמונה בקרב השומעים. So in, other, in order to apprehend the, the, the value of this incredible command from God, כדי להבין את הערך של המצווה הנפלאה הזאת מאלוהים, we, we need to have a measure of trust and faith, belief in the Lord who gives the command. אנחנו צריכים מידה של אמונה ולהאמין במצווה שאלוהים נתן. ואני אישית מאמין שזה המפתח לכל דבר. It's developing in each one of us a heart of trust in the Lord. זה לפתח בכל אחד מאיתנו לב מלא אמונה וביטחון באלוהים. Particularly when enemies rise against us. במיוחד כשהאויב קם נגדנו. Particularly when the pressures seem to be too much to bear. במיוחד כשהעומס קשה מנשוא. Our own hearts. במיוחד שיש כל כך הרבה דאגה בליבותינו. And our minds are giving to wondering, do I have the resources to deal with this situation? והמחשבות מתחילות לנדוד ולחשוב האם יש לי משאבים להתמודד עם הבעיות האלה. Have I made some drastic mistake? האם עשיתי איזה טעות דרסטית? How can I be sure that I'm standing in right relationship with God? איך אני יכול להיות בטוח שאני עומד ביחס נכון עם אלוהים? Where's my assurance that something terrible will not happen to me right after this. So many of us in these days are subjected to this kind of fear and anxiety. And it's in these, these very moments that God's command to rest really has its application. It's In times of pressure, in times of crisis. בזמן של לחצים, בזמן של משברים. In times of absolute personal insufficiency. בזמן של חוסר ספק, חוסר ספק, סיפוק, סיפוק. That's when God's command from the mountain, you will enter my rest. ואז אלוהים מצווה מעל פסגת ההר, היכנסו אל מנוחתי. Really begins to have meaning for us. זה מתחיל להיות משמעותי עבורנו. And we realize that in his rest is refreshment, is comfort. ואנחנו שמים לב שבנוכחות של אלוהים יש התעוררות ויש נחת. There we find... refreshment and healing and restoration. ואנחנו מוצאים שם התעוררות ואנחנו רעננות מוצאים וגם שיקום. And outside is anxiety, fear and death. ואז כל הדאגה והמוות והפחדים נעלמים. But what the New Testament writer is telling us in order to apprehend this. מה שכותב הברית החדשה כותב לנו כדי שנבין זאת. The key ingredient or the key element that we must have, we must bring. הגורם העיקרי שאנחנו צריכים לרצות is a heart of faith. זה לב שמלא אמונה. Somehow, every one of us has to develop the ability simply to trust. באיזושהי צורה אנחנו צריכים לפתח את היכולת לבטוח באלוהים. And, and trusting is, is unique in that it's, it's not something you do. לפתוח זה משהו מיוחד, זה לא משהו שאתה עושה. It more has to do with something that you are. זה משהו שקשור באופי שלך. And so, I think for a lot of us men, this is very frustrating. לרבים מאיתנו זה מאוד מתסכל. Because we want to do something. אנחנו רוצים לעשות משהו. If there's danger, if there's trouble, if there's fear, we want to have something to do about it. אם יש סכנה, אם יש בעיות, אם יש פחד, אנחנו רוצים לפעול ולעשות. But trusting is not something you do like that. ולפתוח זה לא דורש ממך לפעול ולעשות. Trusting is a heart that doesn't do. לפתוח זה לב שלא עושה כלום. It's a heart that trusts in him to do. זה לב שבוטח באלוהים שישחרר. And it's that crucial transfer that has to take place. צריך להיות שינוי מכריע כזה בחיינו. But that then becomes the doorway to... 
to the Sabbath. וזה הופך לנו לשער להיכנס אל מנוחת השבת. That, the, that entire generation in the wilderness missed. וכל הדור של המדבר, הם החמיצו את, ה, את העיקרון הזה. But by the inspired word of God is revealed to... אבל על ידי דבר אלוהים שקיבלנו השראה ממנו והוא נגלה לאנשים כמונו. אנחנו יכולים לומר שהם נכשלו במדבר כדי שאנחנו לא ניכשל. אנחנו עדיין אל העברים 4 פסוק 9. הנה הכותב הזה שקיבל השראה אומר לנו So there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. לפיכך נותרה מנוחת שבת לעם אלוהים. In other words, there is yet a, a Sabbath, a place of comfort and refreshing. במילים אחרות, לעם אלוהים יש מקום של נחת, של מנוחה. A place... וש... נחמה. A place of safety and confidence with God. מקום של ביטחון ומקום של ביטחון והבטחה באלוהים. That place still remains for us to enter in. המקום הזה עדיין קיים בשבילנו להיכנס אליו. Verse, verse 10, for the one who has entered his rest has himself also rested from his works as God did from his. פסוק עשר הן הנכנס אל מנוחתו גם הוא שבת ממלכתו כמו האלוהים משלו. See, it's, it's not something you do. It's not something you accomplish. It really is an, an attitude of our heart. All right, so maybe this is bad news for everybody who feels like they want to do stuff. But it's good news for everyone who is humble or broken and is aware of his or her own deficiency. שמרגישים ענבים ומרגישים לא ראויים ומרגישים שיש להם איזה משהו נגרע בחייהם. אם לא הגעתם לשם יום אחד תגיעו. כשאתם יודעים שאתם בכוחכם לא תוכלו לעשות. ואתם יודעים שאני בעצמי לא יכול לעשות דבר בנוגע לעניין. וכשאתם יודעים שאין לכם את המשאבים. אין לכם את הידע, אין לכם את החוכמה. ואם הבנתם נכון את המילה לבטוח, you are still able to enter into God's presence. Because you take your stand. And you say, yes, it's nothing I can do. But God commanded me to cease from my works. And in obedience to him, I enter his rest. by trust. Verse 11. Therefore, let us be diligent to enter that rest so that no one will fall through following the same example of disobedience. All right, it's simple, but it's not easy. It takes practice. It takes courage. To take a stand of trust. Particularly in times like these. Now I think that the people uh, who, who could not enter into the Sabbath of God. It was because they continued to trust in the things that they could do. And those things that, that we can do very often fall into the category of dead works. Alright, a dead work is a, like a biblical term. And it's something that we do that God didn't initiate. Right? It's something that we do just because we do it or We've always done it that way, or we just want to do it. דברים שאנחנו עושים כי תמיד עשינו אותם בדרך הזאת, ואולי אנחנו רוצים כך לעשות אותם. Or everybody else is doing it. וכולם עושים כך. Everybody else is scared. 
כולם מפחדים. Everybody else is, is upset. Uh, כולם עצובים. So, so I am too. Uh, גם אני יכול להרשות לעצמי. But so many of the things that are not God initiated in our lives. אבל רבים מהדברים שאלוהים לא יזם בחיינו. Because dead works lead to death. כי מעשים מתים מוליכים אל מוות. What God initiates in your life, what you obey, מה שאלוהים יוזם בחייך כשאתה מציית לו, זה הופך לשביל לחיים ולחופש. Of, of way, אם אנחנו בוחרים בשביל שאנחנו עושים דברים לפי רעות עינינו או לפי רצוננו, זה מרחיק אותנו עוד יותר ממנוחת אלוהים. Now I think that the, there is one area I want to focus on. אני חושב שיש איזה אזור אחד שאני רוצה להתמקד בו. That does more to keep us from, from God's refreshment and comfort. שמרחיק אותנו מהמנוחה והרעננות שאלוהים רוצה להעניק לנו. And these are the kind of, of dead works that are produced by the spirit of religion. ואלה המעשים האמיתיים שהם תוצר של הדתיות שהם בחיים. Those of us who want to be believers. אלה מאיתנו שבאמת רוצים להיות מאמינים. And we want to be a part of a believing community. We want to be those who have, who have a belief in our heart, a faith in our heart. And we want to be those who want to be those who have, who have a belief in our heart, a faith in our heart. And we want to be those who want to be those who have a belief in our heart, a faith in our heart. And we want to be those who want to be those who have a belief in our heart, a faith in our heart. And we want to be those who want to be those who have a belief in our heart, a faith in our heart. And we want to be those who want to be those who have a belief in our heart, a faith in our heart. And we want to be those who want to be those who have a belief in our heart, a faith in our heart. And we want to be those who want to be those who have a belief in our heart, a faith in our heart. And we want to be those who want to be those who have a belief in our heart, a faith in our heart. And we want to be those who want to be those who have a belief in our heart, a faith in our heart. And we want to be those who want to be those who have a belief in our heart, a faith in our heart. And we want to be those who want to Of religion. זה רוח של דתיות. And what makes this enemy so dangerous is that it's a spirit that is allowed to get so close to us. ואנחנו מאפשרים לרוח הזאת להתקרב אלינו עד כדי סכנה אדירה. And very suddenly the spirit of religion puts an emphasis on what you should be or what you should do. ולפתע הרוח הדתיות הזאת היא מדגישה את הדברים שאתה צריך לעשות או צריך להיות. And it pulls us away from an understanding of what we really are. וזה מרחיק אותנו מלהבין באמת מה אנחנו במשיח. So often the spirit of religion causes us to be in denial of our own real needs. הרבה פעמים הרוח של דתיות היא מתכחשת ל... צורך האמיתי שלנו. I shouldn't need that because, because I'm a believer. אני לא צריך זאת כי אני מאמין. Or I shouldn't have, have that thought or I shouldn't have that desire because I'm a believer. אני לא צריך לחשוב את החשיבה הזאת או התשוקה הזאת בגלל שאני מאמין. So I just, I just deny all of that and אז, I put my emphasis on what I should be. אז אני מתכחש לכל זה ואני מתמקד בדבר שאני אמור להיות. Rather than on what I really am. במקום להיות מה שאני באמת. When that begins to happen, לקרות, you start to become the victim of anxiety and fear and condemnation and guilt. לשפוט את עצמכם ולהרגיש אשמה. And the problem is because then you'll say, well, I'm only trying to be a good believer. והבעיה היא שאתם אומרים שאני ניסיתי להיות מאמין טוב. Why am I struggling with all this? Why is my life so filled with, with, with a crisis? מדוע החיים שלי מלאים משברים ואני נאבק עם הדבר הזה? Why can't I find any comfort? מדוע אני לא מוצא נחמה בזה? Where is the rest that God promised me? שאלוהים הבטיח לי. And it's because that spirit gets so close and, and subtly draws us away. זה בגלל שהרוח של הדתיות מתקרבת ובאופן מתוחכם מרחיקה אותנו מהמציאות. אני רוצה לתת לכם כמה דוגמאות. בסיפור שכולנו יודעים טוב מאוד. בימים של אליהו. When he, when he faced the false prophets here on this mountain. It was a time of crisis for his nation. And it, was, it really was like a time of war. There were the prophets were being killed. 
There was murders taking place throughout the land. והיה רצח בכל הארץ. And it was a time of famine and drought. זה היה זמן של יובש ושל בצורת ושל רעב. And it was in, in those days that Elijah confronted the false prophets. ובימים האלה אליהו התעמת עם נביאי השקר. And there's something about that confrontation that I believe can show us. ומשהו בעימות הזה יכול להראות לנו The difference between what it means to have faith in God and to be, to be controlled by a spirit of religion. So, turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. You know what, in, in the interest of time, let me just tell you this story. All right, they, they, called, they called all the false prophets up here, somewhere right around here, with, <laughs> to be confronted by the prophet Elijah. <laughs> the false prophets went first, they built their altar, they made a sacrifice. And they, they cried out to their God and they leaped on their altar and they, they did their religious הם עשו את כל המסורת הדתית שלהם והם קפצו והם זעקו לאלוהיהם כל היום ולא הייתה תשובה ולא הייתה נוכחות של אלוהים ולא הייתה שום השפעה And about the middle of the day, Elijah mocked them. And after that, they made a show of cutting themselves with little knives, making, making superficial cuts in their flesh. But by the afternoon, still nothing had happened. Okay, this is, a, is an example of זאת דוגמה של דתיות שקרית. וזו דוגמה דרמטית כדי שאנחנו נבין בבירור מה העניין. But in our pursuit of the Lord's best, בהליכה שלנו אחרי מנוחת האדון, when we begin putting our trust in the things that we do, כשאנחנו מתחילים לשים את האמון שלנו בדברים שאנו עושים, the prayers we pray, התפילות שאנו מתפללים, the words we use in that prayer, שאנחנו משתמשים בהם, sing, השירים שאנחנו מהללים, to, וגם הקהילה שאנחנו באים אליה, fast, והצום שאנו צמים. Subtly, There's a danger that we can begin trusting in those things that we do. And then in a way, those things that we do become an end in themselves. And that's what the false prophets did. And there was no content. There was no rest from God. They continued with this, with their religion. I like to say this. Religion is what we do when God's presence doesn't show up. Sometimes we're prepared just to go on with what we know how to do. And if that becomes our practice, אם זה הופך להיות הדבר שאנחנו מבצעים תמיד, לעולם לא ניכנס אל מנוחת האלוהים. One time I was in another country, and we were having a, a conference with a, a number of leaders, and there was this one very experienced man who had a long history of, of discipling and teaching in that nation. Some of, the, some of the people that he had discipled over the years were, were sitting in the in the front rows of this, of this large conference. Hundreds of people were there, maybe close to a thousand. This man came to the platform to begin his session. And halfway through, he just stopped. And it At first, people thought, well, he's just kind of 
getting his breath or, or something. But the pause went on. And pretty soon, people kind of started feeling kind of uncomfortable. Because he just stood there in the front, not saying anything. Finally, after what seemed like an an age, a very long time, <laughs> he said to this group, the Holy Spirit just told me to stop. And so he stood there until another man got up and finished his session for him. And he sat down. Afterwards, this man told me, he said, not only did the Holy Spirit tell me to stop, he told me that, that what I'm doing in this country, I'm to hand over to other people. And you know, after, after having gone through that discomfort with everybody else, and that wondering, is he really all right? My estimation of him as a servant of our king grew many fold. And here I realized that, that this man was, was the kind of servant who who would rather just stop and be embarrassed than to just go on with the show and lead his audience out of the presence of God into the spirit of religion. Friend, may we each have a discernment in this. Certainly men and women who minister from a platform like this need to be very clear about it. But it is for every single one of us. Because God's command to rest in him was not just for the ministers who stand on the platform. It has to do with everything we do. If you are called to raise your family, if you're called to be a teacher in the education system, if God has called you to be a businessman, or a lawyer, or a judge, or, or a diplomat, whatever it is that God has called you, the same truth applies. The, the focus must never be on what we do. We must be diligent to make sure our focus on, is on who we do it for. And to put our trust in Him rather than in our abilities to achieve and to produce. It's a, sometimes a very subtle shift. But it's if our focus is truly on Him, then we have that ability that is given to trust. Particularly when things aren't working out so well. And even in those situations, or maybe especially in those situations, we end up entering his rest. Right. It's a command. A command of God. He said, outside of my rest is 
death. Elohim אומר, מחוץ למנוחתי יש מוות. You will die if you do not know how to enter my rest. אתם תמותו אם לא תלמדו להיכנס אל מנוחתי. And it's revealed to us in scripture the way we do it is through trust. וזה נגלה לנו בכתובים שהדרך שאנחנו עושים זאת זה על ידי אימון. Our service to God must never be separate from our faith in Him. השירות שלנו לאלוהים אסור להפריד אותו מהאמונה שלנו באלוהים. Whatever you do, wherever you serve, מה שאתם עושים, מה שאתם משרתים, we must be diligent to do it unto Him as an offering. חייבים להיות חרוצים ולעשות זאת אליו כמנחה. Or else be strong enough, be courageous enough. not to do it at all. או להיות אמיצים ומספיק כדי לא לעשות את זה ולהפסיק איתו. Like that man who stood before a thousand people and was just embarrassed. כמו שהאיש הזה שעמד בפני אלף אנשים והוא נבוך והוא הפסיק את הדרשה שלו. But afterwards a lot of us said this is a man of God. אבל לאחר מכן רבים מאיתנו אמרו זה באמת איש האלוהים. Now in order to, to have that we have to be, have, we have to be able to look at ourselves. כדי להיות מסוגלים לעשות זאת, אנחנו צריכים לבחון את עצמנו. Not in light of what we should be. לא באור מה שאנחנו לא אמורים להיות. But in light of what we actually are. אלא באור של מי באמת אנחנו. Let me tell you a story from the New Testament. אני רוצה לספר לכם סיפור מהברית החדשה. Yeshu was going through Samaria. Yeshu עבר בשומרון. And it was by design. וזה היה מתוכנן. He planned to go through there. הוא תכנן להגיע לשם. In the middle of the day he ends up by this well. באמצע היום הוא הגיע אל הבאר הזאת. And he sent the disciples off on an errand. והוא שלח את התלמידים במטלה מסוימת. So on that day, in the middle of the day, it's just Yeshu and there's a woman at the well. באמצע היום זה היה רק Yeshu והאישה השומרונית ליד הבאר. A Samaritan woman. אישה שומרונית. So Yeshu says to her, well, would you get me something to drink? אז Yeshu אמר לה, את יכולה לתת לי לשתות? And she says something like, uh, you must be new around here. Maybe you haven't heard that uh, Jewish men don't speak to <laughs> Samaritan women. <laughs> so, so what do you mean, give me a drink? You know? And Yeshua said, well, listen, if you knew who I am, you'd be the one asking me for the drink. Yeshua said, if you knew who I am, you'd be the one asking me for the drink. Because the water that I would give you Because the water that I would give you would be the kind of water, once you drank it, you'd never be thirsty again. Because the water that I would give you would be the kind of water, once you drank it, you'd never be thirsty again. So now this woman is interested. So now this woman is interested. She says, okay, why don't you give me some of that water? She says, okay, why don't you give me some of that water? And so Yeshua says, no problem. Go get your husband and you can have as much as you want. And so this woman says, well, I don't have a husband. And Yeshua said, you know what? You're right, you don't have a husband. You've had five husbands. And the man you're living with now, you're not married to. Right. Now look. This woman at that moment could have done or said a number of things, right? She'd already tried to mislead him once, right? I don't have a husband. She said, I don't have a husband. She could have, at that point, continued to lie to him. Right? And he's a stranger. Who, and he's, he's asking these personal questions. Or she could have tried to defend herself. Yeah, all right, someone told you my story, but they didn't tell you everything. You don't know about those guys I married, how abusive they were. I've, I've, got, I've got reasons for the way I am. You know, the amazing thing is, And I believe that Yeshua knew this. I believe that Yeshua knew this. That woman did none of those things. 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 That woman did none of And if you're a prophet, why don't you tell me where we should worship God? And if you're a prophet, why don't you tell me where we should worship God? 
Should we worship him here where my people on, on my mountain, Mount Gerizim? Or should we worship in Jerusalem? Okay. At first, this woman is trying to give Yeshua really a false picture of who she is. But when he tells her that he knows who she is, she doesn't deny it. In fact, basically, she confirms it. And I think that there's something about this woman that at that moment she wasn't so ready to, to be what she was supposed to be. She was ready to be with Yeshua just who she was. And so Yeshua begins to speak to her Truth. And elsewhere, Yeshua has said that you'll know that truth and the truth will set you free. So, to this woman, here's what he says. He tells her, God is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and and in truth. And she says, well, I know that Messiah is coming, and when he comes, he'll reveal everything. And Yeshua said to her, I who speak to you am he. Yeshua didn't just tell a lot of people about who he was. He chose this woman to tell some deep and important things for all of us. Why? Because she, at that moment, was ready to deal with him on the basis of what she really was. Not what she was supposed to be. I believe this is a key to entering into the presence of God. He says, God is looking for people who will worship him in spirit and in truth. And that's why this spirit of religion that pulls us away from what we really are and in many ways forces us to live what we're supposed to be will keep you from the presence of God. You want to enter the rest of God? Learn from this woman with a broken life. Learn from this woman with a series of failed marriages. At that moment she was ready to talk to God about what was real. And Jesus says, that's good. That's good. God is looking for people like that who will worship him in spirit which means from the deepest, innermost part of your being. And in truth. Lord, this is what I am. This is what I do. This is what I want. This is where I'm broken. It's this that I don't have. When we begin to deal with God on that level. That's part of trust. For, to that, the doors of the kingdom start to open. Friend, listen, please, if we insist on approaching him as religious people, 
אם אנחנו רוצים ללכת אחריו כעומדים על זה שכדתיים, כדתיות, שאני עושה הכל נכון, אנחנו מתפללים תפילות נכונות, ושרים שירים נכונים, וצמים כשאומרים לנו לצום, אנחנו חושבים שכל שאנחנו עושים יותר מזה, יש לנו יותר גישה אליו. אני אומר לכם, שהגופות שלכם ייפלו במדבר. אבל אם אתם באים אליו בכנות ואומרים זה מה שאני, ולכן אני נואש אליך אדון, אז רוח אלוהים אומר בואו אליי. בואו אליי כל העמלים והעמוסים ואני אתן לכם מנוחה. קחו את עולי עליכם, למדו ממני. כי אני עניו ואני נמוך לב. ותמצאו נחת ומנוחה לעצמכם. לעצמכם, לנפשכם. ישוע מזמין אותנו להיכנס אל מנוחת השבת. One time he met a man who was crippled. פעם הוא פגש אדם שהיה פיסח. This man had been crippled for, the scripture says, for 38 years. הכתובים אומרים שהפיסח הזה היה משותק במשך 38 שנים. For 38 years of his life he'd been asking God to heal him. 38 שנים בחייו הוא ביקש מאלוהים לרפא אותו. For 38 years he did not get an answer. ו-38 שנים הוא לא קיבל מענה. Until the day that Yeshua showed up. Where he was lying. עד היום שישוע הופיע בבריחת בית חסדה. I mean, certainly this man must have gone through entire periods of hopelessness and despair. וזה בטוח שהאדם הזה עבר בתקופה של ייאוש ושל תסכול. But the day Yeshua came to him, אבל ביום שישוע הגיע אליו, one word from the master healed him. דבר אחד מהאדון ריפא אותו. Just get up. קום. Take up that bed you've been lying on for all of those years. Don't just leave it lying there. Someone else will have to pick it up. <laughs> take up that filthy bed and take it out of here. Walk out. קח את המזרון המלוכלך הזה ולך לך הביתה. Walk out of your illness, walk out of your disability, walk out of your hopelessness. צא מהמחלות שלך, צא מהייאוש שלך, צא מהחוסר יכולת שלך. ישוע spoke to him. ישוע דיבר אליו. Now as the story goes on, and most of you know this story, I think. אתם כולכם יודעים את הסיפור כשזה נמשך. When the religious people of Jerusalem saw him, כשראו אותו האנשים הדתיים בירושלים, the ones who were intent on doing everything they possibly could to please אלה שעשו את כל מה שביכולתם כדי לרצות את אלוהים. הם ראו אדם שנושא את המזרון שלו בשבת. איך הוא יכול לציית למצוות אלוהים שלא לעשות דבר בשבת? שאסור לעבוד בשבת. carrying his bed. What's the matter with him? Now, the, the most terrible thing about this is they must certainly have known him. How could they not have known him? איך הם לא יכלו להכיר אותו? הוא שכב שם במשך 38 שנים. כמעט כל חייו הוא היה בבריחה הזאת. במקום לשמוח איתו, They said, you shouldn't be carrying your bed. What's the matter with you? אמרו לו, אסור לך לשאת את המזרן, זה שבת. That's not what we do around here. זה לא מה שאנו עושים כאן. That's wrong. זה לא נכון. Now, what... Yeshua is teaching us is the spirit of the law. 
And if we don't learn by faith in him to walk in the spirit of the law, the spirit of the law is to enter into the rest and the comfort and the healing and the refreshment of the Lord. Like that poor woman woman at the well. But not only did she get born again, oh, and by the way, Yeshua didn't try to convert her to his, his uh, Judaism. She became born again as a Samaritan. How does that work? I don't know. Yeshua didn't seem that bothered by it. She just believed. And then she went and told everybody else in her town about him. And they all came out and they ended up believing. That's the spirit of rest. And that's why I say religion will kill it. Kill it. It's the worst enemy. We want to see all Israel saved. We have to be diligent to work our way out of a religious identity of any kind and make sure we go before the living God every day and we say Lord am I doing this really for you? am I going to my job Really for you? Because if you're not sending me there, I need the courage to be able to not go. <laughs> you know, the way that, that man had the courage just to stop speaking. When everybody was there expecting him. I believe that if we were, had that kind of diligence, and each of us began to enter this comfort, this rest of God, we would find such life. And others would believe. Starting with the most broken, the most needy people around us. And it's to this, I believe, that God calls us today. To, to grapple with this. What is the spirit of Shabbat? That is a command so holy, so important to God. That he said it's the difference between life and death. Either you enter into his rest and find life. Or you fall in the wilderness. And I believe the choice is ours. The Holy Spirit is here. Calling us. Urging us. Saying, be diligent. Enter into God's rest. Understand what is truly meant by Shabbat Shalom. Find a place where you can stand and say, I just trust. Find a place where you can truly say, and when I trust, my God is a rock. My, my God is a fortress. My God is my healer. My God is my deliverer. My God is my comforter. Because I found that place to trust. It's not based on what I am supposed to be. It's based on what I really am. He knows it, and I know it too. And we can, and we can communicate on that basis. 
היסוד הזה. אני מאמין שאלוהים רוצה לדבר על רבים מאיתנו. So, uh, תרכינו את ראשיכם. בואו נבקש מאדון זה שבת. בואו נבקש מאדון שהחסד הזה ייכנס פנימה. ונמצא מקום של מנוחה ושל נחמה בו. To find a place of protection from anxieties and fears. To find a place of refreshment from all the pressures and all the demands that we deal with. To find a place of comfort in, in the face of things that we, problems we can't solve. למצוא מקום של נחמה בפני בעיות שאי אפשר לפתור אותן בכוחות עצמנו. בואו נתפלל רוח הקודש. שפכי את רוחך עלינו. אני מאמין כשאני דיברתי, רוח הקודש דיברה אל כולנו. והמסר שלכם, של רוח הקודש, יותר חשוב מהמסר שלי. רוח הקודש, המסר שלך הוא יותר אישי מאשר שלי. כי את בראת אותנו ואת אוהבת אותנו. את יודעת בדיוק את הנקודה שאנו צריכים להשתנות בה. ובנקודה הזאת אנחנו קוראים לך היום. Please help each one of us. עזרי לכל אחד מאיתנו. We have, there are great demands on our lives. יש הרבה דרישות על חיינו. There are great challenges that we face. יש הרבה אתגרים שאנחנו עומדים בפניהם. There are, there are powerful temptations to fear. ויש הרבה פיתויים שאנחנו פוחדים מהם. We ask that you'll speak to us. אנחנו מבקשים שתדברי אלינו. About entering your Sabbath rest today. איך להיכנס אל מנוחת השבת שלך. Well, we're still praying. אנחנו עדיין בתפילה. אני רוצה לשאול אתכם שאלה. כמה מכם יאמרו היום, אני רוצה להיכנס אל מנוחת האלוהים. אלוהים דיבר אליי להיכנס אל מנוחתו. אני רוצה לקחת את העמדה הזאת. אני רוצה למצוא את המקום של אימון וביטחון. אם אתה ביקשת את זה מאדון, הרם את ידך. You know what, here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to ask if everyone now will stand. Those of you who raised your hands, I'm going to ask you to do one other thing. And here's the reason why. I often explain this, but I'd like to, I know many of you are guests. When we ask God to do what only He can do, the best we can do is a human thing that we can do. הדבר הכי הרבה שאנחנו יכולים לעשות כבני אדם אתה עושה דבר שהוא מעשה אנוש, אתה נותן סימן לאלוהים וזה איתות של להגיד לאלוהים שאני מוכן שאתה תעשה את מה שאני לא יכול לעשות אם הרמת את ידיך ואתה רוצה באמת להיכנס אל מנוחת האלוהים עזבו את המקומות שלכם ובואו אל המזבח. בואו קדימה. Mm-hmm. 